Welcome to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis V. Wolf and Sandy Runner. I am Alexis V. Wolf of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries, and you can reach me at www.thefiersword.com. And I'm Sandy Renner, and you can reach me by web page, sandyrenner.net. And we are Better Together. Together, and we are happy to be here. All right, Sandy, so we are continuing to talk about the kingdom of the God. Kingdom. We, we are speaking out of my book, Thy Kingdom Come, Kingdom versus Religion. So we are well into fall in 2022, Sandy, mm. and we have barely scratched the surface. It barely. is amazing when you really dive into what does Jesus really say? What was Jesus' mission? What did he really come preaching? It is astounding. It is. And you know what's so strange about that? It's been there all along. The whole time. Jesus said, I came to, you know, to promote the kingdom of God. I came that you might know this. And, and we'll read that and say, yeah, okay. But, and we'll go on to salvation, which is a great thing, by the way. But yes, we love salvation. We appreciate that. But we just pin the kingdom of God down to a phrase or right. the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come. But when you really start getting into the Word of God mm -hmm. and pulling that out, you're thinking, oh my gosh. How did I miss that? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. How did we miss so much of what Jesus wanted to implement in the earth, yes. the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. So even for me, a, a very seasoned minister of the gospel, having read the Bible many, many, many times and taught it for 40 plus years, when you begin to pull it down and see it in, in, in this book form, subject after subject after subject after subject, but it all goes right back to the root of the kingdom of God. Yeah, and it's it, fascinating. And I, I know, because we, we both read Miles Monroe many years ago. Yes. So let, to plug Miles Monroe, he's the late, <clears throat> the late great, I'm going to call him the late great Miles Monroe. He died several years ago, I think 2011, yes. uh, in a plane crash. But this man... Really, and I had been hearing about it, but when I got a hold of his book, um, Rediscovering the Kingdom, you read the other one. Kingdom Principles. Kingdom Principles, yeah, and I read that one too, but the first one really ministered to me, the second one really ministered yes. to you, it, which is so cool. This is why we have a bunch of books. You it's don't so have to awesome. read them all, but whatever, whatever will grip your heart and spirit. So anyway, but Dr. Miles Monroe has these incredible books about the kingdom of God, so I highly recommend them. Absolutely. They are incredible. It transformed my spiritual Me life. too. Me too. So um, anyway, so there's just there's stuff out there if we will open our eyes to see. Absolutely. All right, so we are on now on chapter 10, which is kingdom position, and we've been talking about position for several weeks, and this one is king and priest. We may only get to king today. I'm not right. sure. Um, but we want to talk about king, being a king. And again, this is a position. This is not about gender. This is about when the king lives in you. And I've stressed this for weeks. When the, it's so you. When the king lives in you, you become the king because you're dead to self. When the son lives in you, you become the son because he is That's taken it. over your life. And the bride and the all these different things. So we are been, we've been talking about understanding our kingdom position versus breaking things up in the flesh as far as male and female. You want to jump in? I want to read this scripture <clears throat> because she makes a statement <clears throat> on page 99. Um, she gives a definition of a king. A male ruler of an independent state especially one who inherits the position by right of birth. We were, at least I wasn't, and I'm sure you wasn't. Our daddies wasn't. We're not king. royalty. We weren't royalty. <laughs> we don't get to wear the big tiara and crown. Um, so we weren't born into that in that way, but we were born into this place uh, through the, the supernatural birth mm -hmm. uh, taking on the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we're born again into this kingship. And so she says this, I'm going to read it the way she said it, I thought it was kind of cool. So when she said, wow, that was my first response when I became aware of my kingship. First Peter 2, 9 reads, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are not kings so that we can be haughty, high and lofty and lifted up. And we're kings so we're, beneath, we're above everybody else. 
If you've got that mindset in understanding kingship in, in Jesus Christ, you have missed the whole mark. You've missed the whole point. Mm -hmm. We are kings and priests into Jesus Christ to proclaim the excellencies of Him. There's a purpose. It is Another to show <laughs> Him glory. Right. I love, you know, when, when the Bible talks about He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. lords. What kings? What lords? So when we look at it like that, and I, because our net, it, we really have the body of Christ as a whole. That's what we talked about, the body of Christ. We must get out of equating everything to what is in the earth. Yes. And so when, when the, the word says the king of kings, what kings? The kings, we who have, and that in the natural realm, you could say what kings, like you know England and whatever, wherever people have kings. But really, it is because he placed his son his kingship into us. We, I am a king and you are a king. Which means we're not here to dominate or lord over right. each other. We are here to rule together. Yes. He put Adam in the earth initially to rule the earth. And he flubbed the dub. Right? Yes, yes he <laughs> did. Adam messed it up. Like so, we often do. So, <laughs> more, more often oh, than, than we'd we like to admit. About. But Adam gave... So Christ had given... Let's just break it down. I'll try to be quick. Uh, Christ gave Lucifer authority. He ruled in the garden. He did. Because it says he ruled on the high mountain and in the garden. But then he said that he was kicked out. It said you were cast down, cast to the ground, meaning cast from his high position. So then he created Adam and Eve and he gave Adam, he took that authority from Lucifer and gave it to Adam. And then Adam and Eve ruled, or Adam ruled. Um, and then they fell because he looked at this beautiful woman and made her an idol above God and he gave the authority back to Satan. Yes. Right? And so then Satan had rule over the earth until Christ came. Now Satan's still running this show. The difference is we now have the authority of Christ through his spirit in us to usurp Satan. Absolutely. But we must take the initiative to do that. We can't just say, oh, God is God. God is in control. But right now, Satan, Satan is running this show. He's got to run this But this when earth. we are led by the Spirit, when we understand that we have become a king, a king, not the king, yes. when the king lives in us, we become a king. Because again, it's no longer I who live. So it's not about Alexis, whether I'm male or female. It is about the king who now lives in me and he has taken rulership over my body and therefore he can express his kingship into the earth. That's yes. why I can't lord over Sandy because the same king in me is the same king in her. And together we will do greater things than Jesus because through his people he has multiplied himself in the earth. Yes. And so it's never about, and that was kind of the long way around what you just said. That's awesome. We are not to dominate other people and if we are taking our kinship our kinship, our kingship uh, as, as a place to put people under our thumb, which many religious people do. They may have good intentions and they may not, but they're trying to lord over all these people. Yes. One thing I really like about Miles Monroe and his teaching that really struck me, struck a chord in me, and we've talked about this before, Sandy, but that he said, I lead people to Christ so that I can make myself obsolete. Our being a king of the earth that we need to so train and teach people how to be leaders and how to become a king for themselves so that in the, in their territory, again, this isn't about bossing each other around. This is saying, I want to lead you so that you no longer need me. Now, that doesn't mean we, we remove the friendship. It just means I want to train you so well that you can rise up into your own kingship in Jesus yes. Christ so yes. that in your territory you will lead others to Christ. Christ. But when we're trying to constantly keep people under our authority, that's called domination and that's called evil kingship. Yes. There, there is a new age, to, and I want to just kind of give a warning here, uh, in addition to what she's saying. There's a new age teaching that kind of goes to this thinking. It's, it's probably not exact, but kind of this thinking. God is in me. I am in God. So therefore, with God, I am a God. That is not what we are promoting. That is ungodly. No, to be okay? clear, thank you for clarifying We that. are not God. We will never be God. No. Never. There's one God, and there's none like Him. And I want to make that abundantly clear because we can get off on this. Uh, well, we're we're kings of the Christ, and we're priests, and and we can get heady in that if we're not very careful mm -hmm. and miss the whole meaning of that. But you are not God. 
I am not God, we are never going to be God, and there is no way we're going to be God. Even when we're transformed into heaven itself, we still will not be God. So I just want to really give that disclaimer. Uh, there is never true authority unless it is appointed by the one who is an authority. And that is God Almighty and none other. And His Word. Is and it, His Word is, is it. His expression of Himself. Yeah, I, I read recently where these people, I forget they were out west or maybe Midwest, um, that they had murdered some people because they had gone under some leadership, some guy on Facebook, and he was all about, uh, I think it said Hispanics and African Americans or blacks, however it was worded, that they actually rule the earth, that they are gods, and they had the right to kill these the poor white folk. And while as church people will not say it that way, we will start getting off into some teaching that some kind of will promote that. That's so I want us to be careful there. And I wanted to say that very clearly. I'm sorry yeah, no, I'm glad, that, I'm glad that you said that because when I say I am a king, you are a king, thank you. Because someone may take, they go, I am a king. God is the king. The only king. And then he reigns. <laughs> Capital K. Through us. And we will talk in the weeks ahead about being an ambassador and what that looks like. And that yes. will better clarify, but that's not our subject today. But I, I read something years ago, um, and I don't necessarily agree with all his teaching that it's completely irrelevant, but listen, a good word is a good word. A good I don't word care is a good from. word. So years ago, I read a book by a guy named David E. Taylor. <clears throat> you, may, you may have heard of him. Um, but he has a book called Victory Over Pride. And I want to show you this. If you don't have the book, and I can't zoom in because I don't know how that works. But you see two pyramids. I don't know if you can see that. But one is right side up and one is upside down. And he makes some great points that he said, um, and I'm going to quote him, Pride always leads to the high place, which is why we cannot be God's kings in pride. So he said, Pride always leads to the high place. I just lost the place. Humility leads to the low place. Mm -hmm. Pride is whatever makes your head too big for a room. In the world, the leader in a chain of authority is positioned at the top. The pyramid is right side up. Everyone at the bottom serves the one at the top. However, in the kingdom of God, and this is why I keep saying we must start thinking supernaturally. We're so busy thinking fleshly that we equate everything yes. to what we see, touch, and feel on the earth. Right. And we've got to come out of that. Uh, the pyramid is upside down. The person who is the greatest is servant to all. The pinnacle is still pointing toward the leader, but the leader is at the bottom serving all. Jesus lowered himself and served others and exalted all others above himself, including his enemies. Even on the cross, he prayed for those who hung him. I, I don't know. When I read that, it was like, bam! It's a just, moment. It really is. And so when you see people in church trying to be the top, I'm an apostle, I'm a bishop, I'm a prophet, I'm a Bible. So blah, blah, blah. what? So what? Because you are all sheep. And so these people who are all about their titles and their earthly positions that they call kingdom positions, if they're trying to constantly be served and revered, they're out of order. They're out of order. But when and they're in pride. But you can still be a king in Jesus Christ, just as Jesus himself. He is still the pinnacle. He's still the focal point. Yes. But he serves. He lives yes. to serve. And that's how we must be. So as kings, one, recognize that we are king because we carry the king. We yes. are the vessel that carries the king in the earth because he's not flesh and blood. Absolutely. We are. And so when we can recognize that, then we it will humble us. It will not bolster us. Absolutely. Now, I, I want to touch on something here a minute. We have many people in the body of Christ, I'm not questioning their salvation, they just got some things askew like we have had at times and we've had to kind of bring back the alignment. Well, I just want to be a servant. Well, I'm sorry, you've got to be a king before you're a real servant. Because mm -hmm. if, if you're just a servant, then you're not an heir to the throne of Christ. So, we got to be careful that we're not just a servant. Being a king, a true king's heart, you will serve elaborately out of that heart. And you won't be able to serve enough because it is about exalting the real, true king. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, I've been, I went to churches and preached, 
and they would not even allow me to carry my own Bible and notebook to the podium. <laughs> and in their hearts, they were trying to honor me as the woman of God, and I can greatly appreciate that. But there are ministers who will not carry their own Bible to the podium because somebody better be trading behind them to do it for them. See, it's about the mindset. It's about the mentality. It's about the way you think. And so I want to read something she wrote on page 100 in their, her kingdom book. Um, to be in a position of kingship actually is a place of humility. Total humility. Knowing that, if this don't make you shout and cry at the same time, you need to get Jesus all over again. Knowing that the great I am desires earnestly to breathe, live, walk, talk, and be through mere mortals. That's what understanding your kingship should bring you to. Such humility that I'll mop your floor if that's what glorify God and, and bring you to understand Christ. But well, you're the prophet. And the point. So was the donkey says. <laughs> Jesus rode in on a jackass. You know what was the most important vehicle of God at that moment? The jackass. Yeah. Now I know that terminology might turn some of you off. But I'd rather be a jackass in the kingdom of God than miss the boat because I thought I was more than a bag of chips and all that. You may forget what I was going to say. I tend to do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so listen, if we didn't, did we read the scriptures at the, at the top oh, where Lord. we are being? I, I think we just jumped in. Okay, I, I'm, okay. Uh, oh, Revelation 1-6, because you're like, how did you know that we were a king? <clears throat> yeah, Revelation 1-6 says, <clears throat> excuse me, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. <clears throat> Excuse me. Revelation 5, 6 says, And has made us unto has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And so there are other scriptures, but just so we can see that in print. Yes. That God has made us kings. We are to do what Adam was supposed to do Absolutely. and failed. And we are supposed to do it multiplied as the body, the body of, Christ, of Christ. Ruling one another, subduing the earth. And we could go back to Genesis. It's like that was the call then, that is the call now. That call is not going to change. It's when there is a new change. heaven and a new earth, it's still the it's same the call. That we are here to represent God, to subdue the earth, and to represent his kingdom uh, on the earth. And I, it's so simple that I, I honestly, I, I, I am astounded at how little this is really taught in the grand scheme yes, of things. in the grand scheme um, of things. And, and I, I, I'm like you, Sandy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really do appreciate eternal salvation. Oh, my I, I love not going to hell. I think that's... Thank you, Jesus. That's top-notch, fantastic. <laughs> that's top of the list. But... The reason we're teaching the kingdom of God, the reason te Miles Monroe taught the kingdom of God, the reason the ones who do teach the kingdom of God is so that we can understand there is so much more between physical birth, supernatural birth, death, and eternity. Yes. We got a whole lot of space. We got a lot well, of stuff to, to do out. on this earth. Yes. I tell you what, you want people like, oh, you know, and God bless them. God I bless people that I love dearly. That's, <laughs> I just wish Jesus would come back. Well, we would all like for Jesus to come back soon. Because, That's our ultimate goal. Because it's it's going in a downward spiral. But the words prophesied. That's what's going to happen. So I'm not... Uh, can I just say I'm not gung-ho to leave? Go ahead. And I'm not gung-ho to leave. Not because I don't care about paradise. I very much... I'm anticipating. I'm kind of some interested in seeing all the things people right. have said they've seen. But we have. There are so many lost, and and, and that lost number is multiplying because yes. children are continuing to be born in the earth, and people are falling further and further away from Christ. So there are more and more people who do not know this Christ. The church, as we understand it, is in decline in America. Now, that can serve several purposes. But we ought to be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. We ought to be concerned that, you know what, I might, I'll fly away with Jesus in a moment, but maybe my grandchildren don't know Christ. Uh -huh. 
If that doesn't grieve you, then you're too prideful. There, there's a problem. Oh, definitely. And I'm telling you, I've had people call me, because I, I teach the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, but I always say this, and I want to clarify this, if you don't have enough of the power of God working in and through you to, to keep you through tribulation, you don't have enough of the power of God working through you to get you off the ground in a power boost. You know, amen. So, so when I do teach that, I teach that, but in the meantime, while we're waiting on Christ, what are we doing to implement His kingdom on the earth? If we're going to be kings and priests, you know what kings do? They expand their kingdom. Yeah. You know what kings do? They promote their kingdom. Mm -hmm. Kings want to see their kingdom flourish. A good king wants to see their kingdom flourish. Right. That his that his subjects, <clears throat> his people, are being blessed and prospering yeah. and being encouraged. A king cares about his people. Yeah, a good king. And it's, if we serve in the king, he is a good king. We need to be good kings underneath that good king yes. and do what he does. Yes. Yes, reflect we do. His, reflect his, um, his persona. That's We're supposed to be reflections of him. Mm -hmm. So I guess next week we'll talk, we'll do uh, part two. Priest. Um, which is about priest. Yes, being a king and a priest. And there's tons of scripture on that as well. Well, we, okay. Well, we'll cover wow. that really well today. All right. Well, if you guys have just tuned in, you are listening to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis Feeble, this kid right here, Sandy Runner, that kid right there, and we are Two Girls in a Bible, wow. which is fun, 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 fun. fun. And we really long to help people grow up in Christ. Yes. That is our ultimate goal. Uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We ask that you, and I even hate doing it that way, but... Apparently, that's how social media works. It is how But we works. would love to have a larger audience so that we could impact more people with the kingdom. That's Not right. so we can boast in ourselves. We are not it's interested about in that at all. Promoting the message. We really want to help people grow in Christ Jesus. So, next week, we're going to talk about our priesthood, uh, being the king and a priest. So, next week, it's about our position as a priest. So, again, we are both published authors. We are teaching out of my book, Thy Kingdom Come, Kingdom Versus Religion. It has a sister book, as soon as I find it, called Holiness or Heresy, The Modern Day Church. This particular book of mine is actually a word to the church, to the collective body of Christ, how we've made such a mess, how we've gotten where we are. And I love, you know what, I just I love working together. Yes, I love. I love getting together. My other ministry partner, uh, Pam, and she functions completely different than us, but she is just as vital to yes, the work we she do. Because listen, I publish her books, and Pam has a hand in that. So really, the three of us are great ministry partners. You have Absolutely. other ministry partners. She has a broader scope than I. But it, it's, I've got a bigger mouth. It's, it's so good to work together and yes. so it's so funny so this was <clears throat> published I don't know many years ago 15 I think I wrote it maybe 2015 and she wrote this over the last couple of years and the similarities again there's different information so I'm not saying get one or the other I recommend both but her book one law that just came out earlier in 2022 has some incredible information for the church that God gave you a specific letter yes. to the church the yes. letter itself is in this book we got the right one in my hand. One, it's funny how they're even the same colors. Like that, that was unintentional. But listen, we are in a day and age where if the body of Christ does not mature yes. and really say, God, why am I here? What is this about? What is my purpose? We will shudder and fall to the ground yes, when we really are. face real adversity. So um, holiness or heresy, it is a compliment to thy kingdom come. One law, both of these go back to the garden. I think but you've got more of that in this book. I have that, What Was God Thinking? But we need to see where we come from. Yeah. We need to figure you, that you out. You can't really understand your future if you don't get a grasp on the history. Yeah, how we got to the present. So past, present, and future, all all important. Um, Sandy has her autobiography. I was going to say one law. No, nope. stories. A Woman's Journey of Becoming Imperfectly Perfect. I absolutely love this book. I cannot say enough. Her candor and her stories, the way she broke it up uh, into 112. Very short. Most short times. stories. Um, and they're just really blips into her life. So you can kind of look through the looking glass and see how Sandy became Sandy Renner. But it is a, it is a great book of 
and there are highs and lows and in-betweens and correction <laughs> and encouragement. Absolutely. And so much in there. Um, we also have, I don't know, want to talk about these? Her autobiography. Don't say spicy. It captures God and great expectations. And it just takes you through all of her years of um, good choices, a lot of bad choices, a lot of wrong choices, a lot of sinful choices. Uh, what those consequences of those choices. Uh, she had many miscarriages and the pain and suffering through that and broken marriages and broken relationships and just just the church failing her and her failing the church and uh, and just the outcome is what you see here teaching the Word of God consistently and not just I, I can tell you this from a personal understanding she does not just talk about it, she lives it. I've seen this in many, many areas. Perfectly, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Any more than any of the rest of <laughs> I tell oh, you. That is and, and sometimes I have to bring her into correction. Sometimes she has to bring me into correction. That's why we're better together. That's why we're better with you and you're better with us. That this book will encourage you to become more than you can ever imagine that God has in store for you. So it's a great thing. And really, both our autobiographies, it's like, oh, well, if those two knuckleheads can do it, so can Oh, I. my goodness. If God <laughs> can do that through them, what will he do with me? Because after all, I'm not as messed up as they are. Well, clearly. <laughs> or they were. A Nation's Achilles Heel. I love this book! <laughs> this is a powerful, powerful, tiny book, small book, fast read. Uh, well, you could read it fast, but I think when you start seeing the content, you're going to think, oh, I don't like it, but I probably need to take a closer look at this mm -hmm. because the truth is we all have committed some sort of sexual sin if you've been over the age of 10 these days. <laughs> Sometimes Six, not seven, quite eight, yeah, really. And so and what it not only does to your personal life, your spiritual growth, but what it has done to us as a nation, mm -hmm. all of us are like, the nation is like this one tapestry, and we all have a thread or two in that tapestry, mm -hmm. and we can see the mess-ups we cause. And this shows how sexual sin collectively really brings a nation low. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing today, yeah. and the effects of that, and how to come out from under it without condemnation. So it's a great book, A Nation's Achilles Heel. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and I also have I have thirty one. She books. has a whole pile. Um, so I have a large variety of subjects, uh, and I maybe I'll start introducing some of those. We keep talking about the same ones, but anyway, uh, but I have thirty one. So you, both of us have an author's page. Sandy also has two children's books, but it's under your previous name, Sandy Starnes, yes. S T A R N E S, about Finley the Fish and their tweeny books, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. what, what age group again? Uh, Eight to twelve, but you can tweak it a little bit for your younger ones. And and I, some of the adults actually can't wait for their kids to go to bed and read it. <laughs> so uh, it has great little messages mm -hmm. of faith and purpose. Maybe she came up with a third one. Anyway, let's. I keep trying to get her to write more books. I'm trying. She's a little busy. Shop right All right. Now. Well, you guys, listen, we will see you back next week, 8 a.m. Every Sunday morning, we have a new episode. Most Sunday mornings, we have yes. a new episode. Uh, but all of our previous episodes are on YouTube. So you can just type in Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible, and everything will come up. So you guys have a great week. Be blessed. Shalom.